climber. When you have a meeting with a music publisher, what are they looking for? What do they like and not like in songs? Well, I've helped some song, some of the Songwriting Pro community get in front of legit publishers, and I'm here to drop some knowledge on you. If you want to have a successful publisher meeting, this one is for you. Johnny, do that thing. Welcome to the club! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. You get to do it yourself. You get to, uh, you don't need anybody's permission but your own, okay? You gotta make sure you give yourself permission to be an artist. But hey man, creating that business, getting those song cuts, making all that stuff happen is what has to take place first before you're gonna work with the people that you wanna work with. That's the new music business and that's why we created the podcast, CLIMB, Creating Leverage in the Music Business. That's brilliant. That's a Baxter mm -hmm. from my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter, who's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady A, Joe Nichols, and more. And what I love about Brent is he helps artists and songwriters like you turn pro by teaching you how to write like a pro, do business like a pro. And then on the regular, he gives you, which is what we're going to talk about today, in touch with and an opportunity to create a relationship with a pro. So you can find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Isn't that name just brilliant? You got to get away with words. <laughs> good thing you're a lyricist there we go me do words good i would like to introduce you to my co-host johnny dwinnell johnny owns daredevil production they're breaking artists digitally by identifying new fans through data yeah it's sexy but johnny knows how it works mm -hmm. if you're an artist looking to increase your streams blow up your video views sell more live show tickets and get discovered by new fans tv and music industry pros then daredevil production can help Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum multi artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That is production singular, no S, and there's no S because there is no other Johnny D. Johnny, you know what, before we launch into it, I was thinking something, we always say singers, songwriters, indie artists like you, but also the industry pro. Let's not forget them. Yeah, the ones right. that are already in the business and looking to create more leverage in the music business. Let's not forget about them too. So if you're listening and That's you're already right. on Music Row, God bless you. Glad you're listening. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. How you been? Man, I've been good. I've been good. I'm ready to rock this out and, uh, you know, just Did live you guys get a, a lot, bunch man. of snow out there too? Uh, not, near, not as much as Nashville. Not as much as Nashville. So it's not, it's not too bad. And uh, we don't go anywhere anyway. So when we're home, you know, we homeschool. Hazel had to be home for a couple of days. So that was harsh. But other than oh, that, she's back at school. <laughs> she's back at school. So we're all like, ah, exhale, because the vibe is different when Hazel's in the house. We love her, but she's a monkey on morphine. So, <laughs> yeah, she's a jackrabbit on crack. Um, so, yeah, she's back in school. So all is well. <laughs> so, yeah, we're good, man. Okay, Thank you cool. for asking. Cool. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm fired up about today because today, um, so just like at the time of this recording, it was like two nights ago, we had a play for a publisher event. We do these on a regular basis at songwritingpro.com. And we had a buddy of mine in and uh, Paul Compton, who used to be one of my pluggers and, and he's working at Wide Open Music. And these are always chock full of great advice for songwriters. You know, I'll explain mm -hmm. more about how we do it, but there's just so much good stuff in this uh, from this event the other night that I just want to tease out a few lessons from it and from just kind of what I hear from doing these so much okay. that I just want to share them with the climb community, man. Cool. And speaking of the climb community. Yeah. We want you to join the climb community on Facebook. Yes. That's at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the climb community. You have to ask mm -hmm. to be let in, but we let everybody in unless you're a bot or, um, you know, some kind of marketer, or a hooker. Um, yeah. Not that we're judging. We just don't want, you know, we just don't want you hooking, selling, or botting in the climb community feed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is for singers, songwriters, and, and artists, and indie artists, and industry pros. That's what it's for. So That's um, right. Anyway, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Guys, we, we, we want to hear about everything, all things, man. The new gigs, those are on... You know, put, put, tell us about your gigs and a comment on 
the post that happens every Thursday. Tell us about your new music and a comment on the post that happens every Monday. And what we're going to talk about now is we want to hear your wins and tell us about your wins on the new Heights post that happens every Wednesday, but put it in as a comment. What That's we right. That's right. We want them as comments so we know where the party is. We know where the cocktail parties are happening every day. All right. You don't want to be in the hallway like trying to chat up the, I don't know, whatever, a piece of art on the wall. You want to be in where the people are. That's and right. if you're not posting as a comment under the proper post, then you're just like out in the hallway just talking to air. You want to be in the room where the people are. So in the room where the these, movers and the shakers and the beautiful people are. That's right. That's right. That's right. So every Wednesday we post at New Heights, and that's where we invite you to share your music-related wins with us. And so we got a couple of these that we want to share. Uh, Buddy Lee Daubertine says, I opened a recording studio with a hit songwriter writing with Tracy Bird's uh, lead player in 20 minutes at the time he posted this. So a bunch of good stuff. So right. that is awesome, Buddy Lee. So, um, yeah, I keep up with him on social media, of course, you know, because he's a climber and stuff, and I see it, so it looks like he has good stuff going on. I think he's down in Texas, and so he's making stuff happen down there, which is cool. Making miracles happen. I That's right. It. Also, Mackenzie O'Brien and band posted Sugar Daddy Issues released today. Yeah. Co-writers Brent Baxter, Blue Foley, and Trick Savage. I'm so humbled to have these professionals right, uh, right on this one with me, so... Thank you, Mackenzie. It was a blast to write that song. Also, that's a win for me. That song just came out. She's a Daredevil client, so I know it's going to be getting some spins, and some people are going to be seeing it, and I'm excited about that. So I also want to thank Mackenzie and Blue and Trick for writing that one with me. Yeah, that's this is going to be fun, man. I'm just looking. So this this so this so will come out a couple of weeks from the day that we recorded this. So the, it dropped on... The 17th of January. Mm -hmm. Today's the 18th of January when we're recording this. And so it's been out. Um, it's been out a little more like than 24 hours. 24 hours. And she had 4,016 streams already. I'm excited about nice. that. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I think uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how, how, how this works. We had a really cool video that I'm finishing up editing. Uh, we already put out a music, uh, a lyric video which we're going to begin to push. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a different song. It's a unique little tune. Mm -hmm. And she did a hell of a job. Um, uh, really just hamming it up for the video, man. Cause it, it's like, it's, I was just really proud of her, man. We had a really good time shooting that video and it's, it's, uh, you've seen like little bits and pieces of it, but yeah, it, it it's going to be, uh, it's going to be cool. And she just really just, she looked like a star. I mean, I, I just, just it was magical, man. I can't wait to, I can't wait to get that done and put it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad because you've, you've brought it up so often on the podcast. I'm like, good. Now people can go hear it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, people can well, go, go hear Sugar Daddy issues after hearing Johnny talk about it for the past two years <laughs> since we've written it. It's so good. So. I just love it, man. I think, I think there's just so much, uh, you know, potential for it. Um, and, uh, and, and because it's different, like I like when it, stuff's like really different. You know, it's it's, it's, it's almost that. like it's almost like a novelty song, almost. You know, it's just so almost. It doesn't. I don't know. It's quirky. It's just, yeah, it's quirky. It's quirky. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's really yeah. So. And so, and and lyrically, and conceptually, and um, you know, I'm I'm proud of the production. I mean, we went in there, and I'm like, yeah. if, look, if we don't do hooks, like everybody's got to be hooks. Uh, like, yeah, it's you know, guitar player hooks, bass player hooks, like drummer hooks, every everything hooks like we need hooks like it's got to yeah. be that or this thing's gonna fall flat on its face you know and they, everybody delivered and it's, it's just fun man it's yeah like, it if you listen great. to the arrangements in the track and everything it's like you can just hear it's like this thing it just pumps and it's it's cool so, yeah so thank you Mackenzie, for cutting it and thank you for johnny for for cutting it as well and oh y'all oh yeah and shout, out, shout out to my my co-producer zach allen the man the myth the legend love you buddy uh, we, yes, we thank you to zach us. All right, so Play for Publisher, what we do is like every month in Songwriting Pro, we have like an event or two because, you know, our, our goal there is to help you write like a pro, do business like a pro and connect to the pros. And so to help you do that, we one of the things we do like quarterly is a Play for Publisher event where I send up the bad signal and I'm like, send in your songs for, you know, X guest that is coming on a publisher. It might be Michael August, it might be Paul Compton, it might be Tim Hunzi, it might be, you know, we've had a bunch of people come through in the years. <laughs> Every one of them a pro. And so, you know, send me your songs and then I go through and I A&R them and get to the 10 that I think have the best chance of catching our, 
our guest ear in a good way of being a good door opener. And so mm-hmm. I do all the NR and then we get together the 10, uh, which top 10. Okay, let, let me interrupt you for a second, which like yeah. the A&R part is, is not only like, okay, you're looking for the, you know, the best songs, but also once, you know, we've got this level of like really competitive songs mm-hmm. that are there, then it's okay. Which one of these is going to be appropriate for this specific guest for this person for this for guest this yeah because i want to help create wins for my community and yeah. i want to create wins for my guest the publisher so mm-hmm. how can i help create you know the best way to create wins for my community is to create wins for the publisher to yeah. try and serve them up stuff that they get excited about and writers they'll be excited about so that's what i want to do i want to make my guest happy and go wow you started up great stuff because that's going to create the best wins for for the audience so send the songs in i and arm i listen through i pick the 10 and so then our, our publisher guest and me and then the 10 writers and their co-writers are also invited. Hop on to Zoom. We go through. I play DJ. We play each song. Publisher gives their feedback on it. And then in the time, you know, each song has like eight minutes. You, the writer gets to have a little face to face, a little chit chat with the guest, ask <laughs> follow up questions, that kind of stuff. So instead of just like all you hear is like, oh, we play pass, keep pass. We wanted to have a little more educational opportunity to this to help you write like a pro and do business like a pro and to connect to the pro like does all those things because you learn. It's not just a pass. It's like, oh, it's a pass because this, this and this needs some work or it's a keep because I really like this, this and this. And hey, where are you from? OK, you come to town often, that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a good time. That's why we limit it and just to try to make it as helpful as possible. Everyone that sends in the song gets a um, access to the replay of it. Because there's so much good learning and education available if you have ears to hear, right? If you're willing to look at that and go, this is how publishers think. Yeah. So, I God, can't I would, share I would, I would, I, like, I, when I was like, you know, had the fleeting moment for a second after getting off the road where I thought, maybe I'll be a songwriter. And, yeah. uh, and I came to Nashville, I would have given my left arm for this opportunity. Like, what yeah, happens like, in what happened that there? room, you know, in the publishing room? Like, how do they. How do they look at it? Like, I, you know, I think mm. it, when it, when it's the devil, you don't know if you haven't been in there. It's so funny. But the first thing you just without even like consciously thinking about it, you're like, you know, what if they're mean? Like, but you don't but you don't yeah. consciously think about it. There's just like a version to it. You know what I mean? You just don't know. All of a yeah. sudden, all of a sudden now it becomes, oh, well, this is just two people talking. It's just stupidly yeah. silly as that sounds. I mean, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I first, when I first like I met, when I first went in to meet uh, uh, Kim Tribble, you know, yeah. I, I was he's just a friggin' songwriter, man. But you'd have thought I was meeting Elvis or something. Like I, I yeah. didn't even know his songs. I don't. I didn't listen to country. I was a rock guy, but I knew he was like a big hit songwriter. And I'm nervous. Why the yeah. fuck? You know what the hell? And I, so it's just that thing, you know. And I think it just is like, wow. Pull back the curtain. Calm down. It's just two humans. Let's start there. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, what goes on next, right? Like, and then, yeah. then I think you would get like to have that access and to have it more than once, right? With mm-hmm. all these different publishers, you, you would start to, the game would start to slow down a little bit for you and you would start yeah. to develop like a, like a, like a, an intuition on the nuance of it. Right. Yeah. So without the nuance, and I, I just wanted to make this point, like without the new, imagine this, like if you've ever had this happen where you go to, let's say you're going to buy an SUV, you need to buy a car mm-hmm. and you know that you need an SUV <clears throat> and you go to the car dealership and you tell them you want to buy an SUV and the salesman comes out and starts showing you all these like really killer cars. Yeah. And you're like, but I want to, I like, I, what I need is an SUV. It's like, but look at this yeah. one's even cooler, right? It's better. It's got more features. It's like, it's like, no, I get it. That's great. But I, I, I got to get my need, kids. I, I, yeah. I, I can't put my kids. Like <laughs> I got five kids, you know, like, yeah. like I, I need an SUV and how frustrating that would be. It doesn't matter how good that other product is. Right. It's mm-hmm. like, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, that's right. not what I do. I do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that, you know, I think too, too often we let our artist souls get hurt by um, when something could simp- the nuance says, Oh no, this is really good. It's just inappropriate for this particular 
umbrella. Yeah, right? and what, what's, what's really interesting about the these, ten. they specialize on this, not that. Yeah, and what's really interesting about, like, say, the top ten is they're all quality songs. Yeah, of course. Like, you know, a lot of climbers are also in the songwriting pro community, and so they send in good things. So, like, culling down to those ten, like, they're all quality songs. Mm-hmm. And that's really when it really gets interesting when, you know, when there is like, it's much more nuanced kind of stuff. It's not just like, well, this was an eight minute dirge about, you know, it's not lollipops or something completely. Yeah. Random. I want to split my no. wrist at uh, you know, like, 45 seconds in, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like that uncanny Valley, you know, like it, it kind of looks like a hit, but there's something off about it, you know, and you're trying to, it's more dialing in on that stuff, which is super, you know, you know, helpful if you're trying to get that from good to great, you know, because all these songs are good. And, you know, so there are many. So, and, and, that oh, can, can we go down this just a little bit? One more thing about this. Like, yeah. I, I just I want to impress everybody with this. Like, before we started recording today's podcast, you and I, <clears throat> I wanted to drop a quick little bomb on you, right. About like a, a book that I'm reading yeah. on, on uh, sales stuff and, and, and different, um, you know, marketing stuff that I'm doing. And that conversation ended up lasting like an hour. Why? Yeah. Because we're both all of a sudden the wheels are turning. Like it, like when you get that new information, it, I'm not sitting there pissed off that like, you know, the funnels for my clients don't have this. It's just, invigorating me like i'm excited like all of a sudden i became super productive i read that one thing that I, or those two things that i like just mm-hmm. the first two par- the first two uh, uh chapters of this book like i, I did this and then now I've, i'm rewriting all this stuff like you know what i mean because i'm so excited because i, I learned yeah. something new that can be and i knew where to incorporate it so It's like to be that fly on the wall, to be able to have access and see those meetings. Mm -hmm. Like back when I was trying to, when I was going to do that, I was like, I would have, I would have killed for that because it's, it would have been so, it would have made me so much more creative too. Like so much like invigorated, like, Oh, okay. I'm seeing where the bar is. And also I've been given a couple tools to reach that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go back and, and redo this. So I just think it's invaluable, man. I really do. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a good time. And and the stuff I want to share on this, it's not just from the last event, but they, like, these are things that come up again and again in these. Mm-hmm. I've been doing these for several years now, had a lot of pros on different genres, different stuff. And a lot of stuff is just kind of commonalities, but there, there are a few that I just want to kind of cherry pick that if you, if you did send in a song, the replay is already in your inbox, watch the whole thing. Cause there's a lot more than I have time to get to today. And that's part of the, you know, hey, the benefit of sending a song in, even if you don't make the top 10 this time, you still get a chance to win, which is really important. Hey, uh, quick question. When you yeah. when you send out those what, to, to everybody that enters, when they get the replay on it, when you send that out, do people ever respond? Because I'd be interested to know like what all those writers who sent something in, like after they watched it, was there something that they picked up from it? An angle maybe that you hadn't thought about that could be shared with other people and stuff. Did they ever... Not that they it. ever say. <laughs> Not you ask them, say. you know. Yeah, I mean, I get you know, I'll hear from people that were in the top ten. You know, I yeah. hear wins from them and that kind of stuff. But other people that watch the replay. So hey, if you watch the replay and you picked up a nugget that I don't cover today, hit me up. It might already be in my notes that I because I'm always taking notes during it. Because mm-hmm. part of it, hey, I'm learning, I'm getting reinforced on stuff I'm doing right and stuff I can because I'm always looking to get better. Um, so again. Not covering yeah. everything, but hey, yeah, let, let me know. Hit me up. Email me. You got my email in your inbox with the replay, so feel free to just respond to it. That would be it. fascinating to me. Yeah. yeah. All right, so here's a couple of things. Um, Paul said something I thought was really cool, a, a good way of serving it up. He said, your verse is like a funnel. Everything drives the listener to the course, mm-hmm. right? It's fun. Like there's only one spot is coming out of a funnel. It's not a sieve. It's a funnel, you know? And mm-hmm. so everything in your verse is, is bringing that listener along dropping them off boom right at the course Mm -hmm. so there's it's about focus right it's about focusing your your verse where like this is where it's going to come out and so just you want to make sure that when you're writing your lyric it's like is it unfocused is it pulling in a couple different directions before it hits to the course or is it just that like that line of focus like we're moving you from a to b to course a to b to course like boom it's it's intentional Sometimes on a, on a first write, it may not happen like your first draft, and that's fine. But once you kind of figure it out, 
that's what rewriting can do mm-hmm. for you to go okay it's cool oh i found it i found out what we're about you know some they say sometimes the first draft is to find out what your your book or your song is about well, that's cool that's fine now a that you know what it's step, about a necessary step yeah right. now that you know what it's about now i can go back and make sure everything maps to that and and that that verse funnel just brings them right to the core so they're mm. set up for it so i just thought that was an interesting way to look at it, is your verse is like a funnel everything it's moving the listener through that funnel right to that course um and he also talked about making sure that your hook lands with a punch you know there there's a song or two he's like ah the hook landed you know kind of kind of landed flat for me and he and paul unpacked this and he said you want to make sure um and through you know this is kind of picking up on a couple songs so i'm kind of doing amalgamation here but like there are some songs that you know there's a song that maybe didn't set up the course uh, the hook as well because there weren't enough breadcrumbs dropped along the way like in the first line kind of reference the theme thing and then it doesn't you know mention it again to like the end of the course it's mm-hmm. like, man it didn't like it wasn't all leading to that like he kind of didn't have the funnel thing like i needed some more breadcrumbs so that when the you know that hook hit I was like, oh, it was there it's all the payoff. time. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, payoff. yeah. You got to set up to pay off. And there yep. wasn't enough set up through there to pay off. It just kind of, if you just miss the first line, you'd be like, oh, that came out of nowhere. And you might be, it might be, oh, it's fine, but it's not going to hit like it could. So yeah, yep. you want to set it up so you can pay it off. You want to leave enough breadcrumbs that, and for different songs, maybe more breadcrumbs than others, but you want to leave enough breadcrumbs that, you know, one thing we have as, as listeners or as writers is the curse of knowledge. If we know where we're going, you know, we have that in our head the whole time, but we got to make sure that keep in mind, the listener only knows one line at a time. Yeah. First time they hear that song, the true art of communication. At one point, all they know is the first line. All they know are the first two lines. All they know are the first three lines. And when they get to that hook, it's the first time they've heard it. Have you, you know, have you built in enough setup? for that payoff. So that's really important. Oh, you know, we talked about when you hit that hook or that title, it's great if it can be both surprising and inevitable. Okay. Okay. Like, Oh, I'm surprised. Oh, that was great. But what else could that have been? Oh, of course. Of course. (laughs) Of course. Oh my God. (laughs) Right. It's, we talked about, uh, the sixth sense, you know, that movie, Mm -hmm. Bruce Willis movie, six sense, you know, no spoilers here in case you haven't watched a 30 year old movie, but first time you see it, there's this incredible payoff at the end. And it's like that surprising and inevitable, like, Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. And you're like, the breadcrumbs were all there. It's they set it up. It didn't come out of nowhere. It wasn't with a ex dose machina. It was, it was there. They set it up. They dropped the breadcrumbs. And when it hits you, it's both surprising and inevitable. Like, of course, what else could that have been? And so that's super important that your your hook has that kind of thing. Something you want to land with some energy. So if it's too obvious, too conversational, it can land flat. Like, oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's the whole, you know, why the chicken cross the road? Well, to get to the other side. If you've heard that joke a bunch, that's no longer, oh. You know, the first time you hear it, it's like, oh, that's funny because it's so obvious. But you don't want your, your title to be that. It's so yeah. obvious. Like, oh, uh, uh, okay. Is that it? <laughs> you know, that's yeah. all you had. That was it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want that. So some sort of twist, some something that gives land with some stank, you know, I mean, both melodically. Yes, but also just the, some sort of twist some sort of surprise, but inevitable. Um, another thing we talked about is uh, Paul mentioned a lot. It's like, you know, talked about the presentation of the song was really good. So we had piano vocal, we had uh, full band demos stuff that was like in the box and stuff that sounded like it might have been like a live band or whatever. Your recording should fit the vibe of the song. So whether piano vocal or full demo, either case you want a good performance and a good recording and it needs to fit the vibe of the lyric. Yeah. So now it's one thing if you're, it just helps when you're playing for a publisher. Now, once you're working with a publisher, they're going to turn in probably work tapes a lot and they're going to be able to need to hear a good song in that work tape. But especially when you're trying to make that first impression, you want to come with a good recording. Mm-hmm. Like we had one, Elizabeth, she played a song. It was her playing piano. She's a really good piano player. She's a good singer. And Paul was like, that's great. 
that's all you, this song needs because of what the song was. Mm-hmm. And it was a good performance and a, and a good recording. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, this kind of thing, I think that's all you need. Yep. You know, other things, if it's a big rock thing or big, you know, anthem thing, hey, you're yeah, going to always think about like, if you there. think about like uh, Tim McGraw's truck, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, a piano vocal on that, probably not going to land right. You know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> you need a little bit more of that production thing to make that work yeah. as opposed to a piano vocal or an acoustic vocal of uh, the house that built me where you're just like, yep. Okay. Let, let yeah. That's all that needs. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, I mean the production on the cut on both, both was number one smart. hits, right? Both. Mm-hmm. Uh, or no, she didn't have a number one with house that built me. Did she? Oh she yeah. She, I'm sure that was number one. I, I mean, don't it was like song one. of the year. I don't think she ever had a number one until she was, uh, did the duet with Jason Aldean, but it was probably top 10. Um, I don't know, but it was song of the year. I know that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So it was oh, bigger yeah. than a number one, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's right. No, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but so I, you know, but I, it's like, uh, but, but so both songs just delivered fully what, you know, you would want a song to do in yeah. the business world. But interesting, you know, one, a little bit more production value than, than the mm-hmm. other and you know the difference, right? Like, yeah. And just having a good professional presentation when you're presenting in a professional way. And, and I've had work tapes make it through to the play for publisher, by the way. So I don't, you know, just discount one. I'm looking for a song. And so, yeah. you know, I'll play a work tape. I've, I've had work tapes get through and get good responses. I've had <laughs> piano vocals, guitar vocals, full band, whatever. I try to be just, I'm looking for songs because mm-hmm. I know the people I bring on can hear that stuff, but it certainly is an added bonus that, I mean, Paul mentioned several times. Like, oh, that's a good demo. Like, cause it shows that you can do that, that like you've got, you know, that part of the business too, that you can, you can move it that far down the line yourself. Yeah. So it shows more parts of the business that you have a handle on, which is good. That never hurts. Uh, but you just want to make and sure. And also it I, you. think about right. how it's consumed. Like, you know, when, when a publisher is going to, how is a publisher going to bring your song to market, a lot of times, it's a it's a pitch meeting yeah. where the publisher's there with the A and R person or the artist or the mm-hmm. um, the producer or maybe you know all of them or, yeah. or two out of three, and they're playing a bunch of songs mm-hmm. in a row. So can your song sit in between two? you know, better produced demos and hold yeah. water, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, that, that, and that's that you have to ask yourself that question. If it can, good. It's a strong melody. It's a strong verse and it, enough on its own, or like, you know, an acoustic version probably of something like truck. Yeah. Is not mm. going to sit well like that? Even though that song did everything it was supposed to do. It just it, requires it, more of the listener. Yeah, yeah. And you may yeah. not always be playing it for someone who can hear that. Now, again, for the play for publisher, we're not concerned with that because it's trying to introduce you, start a relationship with the publisher. And if they love it, then they may go demo it. Or, you know, it's it's right. not that step. It's not the end pitch to an artist. It's to a publisher who is going to hear a good song and a good writer start building relationships. So it's not as important on this step, but it definitely helps just yeah. present that professional, like good first impression. Even though, mm-hmm. heck, I've I played work tapes during these. But having a good presentation. So we want to think about that. Is it, you know, is it fitting what you're doing? Another thing is it's important that the lyric and the melody are well married. They must kind of fit well together and support each other. Mm-hmm. Is the is the phrasing sitting in there well in a either just cool way, a natural way, a conversational way, a compelling way, in a memorable way? Like, does it feel like I don't know what came first, the lyric or the melody. They both, uh, they must have come together because they just like, I can't imagine mm-hmm. either one without the other, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's, that's super important that they sing well. I'm, um, a coaching client of mine got a gift to me. It was a really nice gift that Paul McCartney, like double book of lyrics. Oh, wow. Like this big old like box set book thing. And so like all these lyrics and the story behind them was super, very, such a thoughtful gift and generous. And so I've been just kind of going through slowly, kind of like daily tastings and just enjoying, Mm, you know, marinating on it, marinating them. And like, I don't have to blow through this book. I'll be working on this for a while. So, and McCartney though, you know, it's just funny when you read a lot of those lyrics by themselves, they don't have nearly the impact that they do when you hear it. Without the melody. Yeah. 
because McCartney is so melodic. He's such a melody guy and he's great at it. You know, I mean, he's he's a legend, uh, but it's a very different experience reading some of those songs that maybe I didn't know from like the Wings era or some of that stuff. Just reading the lyric by themselves. They don't they don't read as well as they sing. Uh, and some, you know, country has just has a different lyrical sensibility that's going to probably be a lot tighter lyrically. But that's one thing that McCartney and Lennon and stuff did really, really well is that those, I mean, it, those words sing so well. They're so well married to the melody. And yeah. so you want that. You want your song to sing, to feel natural, to be something a singer wants to sing and to fit in there really well. You you mm -hmm. want your, you don't want your lyric to be totally subservient to the melody. Like it, it's not the redheaded stepchild. It is equal partner like a marriage, but it, like a marriage, they need to complement each other, bring out the best in each other, both be strong on their own, both have, you know, pay respect to the lyric. I'm not saying that just, ah, I'll just put anything in there. It'd be fine. Give respect to it. Nashville yep. is still very much a lyrical town, but man, it's got to sing or it won't get song. Yeah. So that's another thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want your song to be easy for the listener to follow. Some songs require a lot of the listener, just like we were talking about some work tapes and stuff may require a lot from the listener. Like it's better to have a, a clean guitar vocal than it is to have a bad work tape, mm -hmm. like a dated 1980s sounding, you know, demo. I'd mm -hmm. It's better to have a clean guitar vocal. Why? Mm -hmm. Cause I'll have to unhear certain things. Yeah. The big, the also, big nineties uh, reverb on the vocal, like uh, it makes it feel old. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, you and so you also want your your song to be um don't require too much of the listener generally for mass audience kind of songs so there are a couple of songs paul was like man there's just a lot going on that i gotta like and if we got if we're listening we got the lyric in front of us we got the lyric on screen you can hear the song and like even following along with the lyric in front of us like okay this is requiring a lot of the listener there's a lot going on here in this first verse who you know kind of getting lost in the weeds here Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe a lot of characters, a lot of action. There's just kind of too much. It's like, how, how can you simplify things, you know? Or so was that lyrically that he was saying that? Yeah, like lyrically, there's just like a lot going on. Like, okay. whoa, what? I got to really be dialed in here. And I'm having to think about it. I'm having to work. Like, you're getting, you're putting me, I got to work. <laughs> who, who is that person in the second line again? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that, is that a subplot? I just said, we're done with yeah. side <laughs> quest in the pre course. Yeah. So, you, know, you want to keep it simple songwriter, right? K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple songwriter. Not not simplistic. It doesn't have to be simplistic. There's a difference between simple and simplistic. Mm -hmm. But you want to be, and I look at it again, it's easily digestible, right? Can I digest? Because again, one line at a time, am I, you track it with me? You track it, you follow me? You with me? You with me? You with me, right? You should be thinking about that after every line. You with me? Second line, mm -hmm. you with me? Third line, you with me, right? Cause you can't stop. They're not going to pause it and contemplate go. Oh, okay. You know, there's sometimes in songs where I, I have to like recalibrate because, Oh, I thought we were doing this. Thing. Oh, we're doing that. Okay. No, that's not what I thought. Okay. Let me, okay. What, what, wait, what did I just yeah. miss? If, if, it, if there's room for misinterpretation, uh, yeah. On what's going to happen. Then it's, it's yeah. You know, it's a problem, right? It's like, like Murphy's law. If it can't be misinterpreted. It will be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so, you want to have that kind of each line they're following with you. So sometimes there's just like way too much going on and you're just giving them like this dense block of lyric. That's like, wow, that's a lot. Other times you may have the curse of knowledge that we talked about earlier. And since you know what's going on, you don't give them enough. You don't mm -hmm. give enough breadcrumbs. You don't have enough dots for them to connect. You see the whole picture in your head, but they don't. Cause again, remember they don't know anything yet. All they know is what they've already heard from your song, which may be three lines or four lines or whatever. And so that can also make the song hard to follow because there's not enough there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you try to, you write these things and you try to always keep an eye on going, okay, if I didn't know what I know, what would I know? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. What am I giving the listener? Okay. Cause remember, this is not for us to, you know, just, it's great if you write some songs just for yourself. That's cool. But if you're writing songs for publishers, for people to hopefully get out in the commercial marketplace, they have to understand what's going on. I mean, that helps certain genres, you know, talking about the Beatles come together. What's going on? It's a killer vibe. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know if there's anything else going on and words that sound interesting and really married to the melody. Well, and there's yeah. not, it's not about what it's about, but country is a much more lyrical format. CCM Christian Southern gospel, a lot of bluegrass, you know, they're much more lyrical. So, you know, you want your listener to be along for the ride and not be lost and frustrated. So that's another thing. If, if a publisher or anybody gets kind of lost and has to do too much work, Hey, I got other things I can do. Yeah, I got lost. You know, I've, I've been in publisher meetings where, you know, guy clicks off the songs. Like, I got a little lost there and he's on, yeah. he's on, on to the next one. Right. It's over. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you want to do your hand holding. Um, and so this is, I mean, that's just a, a few of the insights from last night. So just kind of recounting some of these, a verse is like a funnel. You want everything to move the listener to the course. The whole verse is just moving them along to that course. You want to make sure the hook lands with a punch. So you want to make sure that you've set it up significant, you know, enough adequately for that payoff. You also want to make sure it's not like just too conversational, too obvious and too like bland. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're talking about whole, you know, the whole song is like, you know, this is a very basic example, but like you treat me like crap and you cheat on me and da, 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 da. And the course is, so I'm leaving. <laughs> you're like, oh, you well, don't say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. but if it's like, you know, here's the story about my house, my handprints on the front steps are mine and my dog's buried under that tree, blah, 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 blah. And this is the house that built me. Then you're like, oh, OK. Yeah. Or, or you treat wow. me like crap and you cheat on me. And so I dug my key into the side of his pretty yeah. little suit of four wheel drive. Well, next time I came into his leather seat. seat, it's like, holy crap. Like, OK. Yeah. <laughs> And part of that is like, like in say before he cheats that Carrie Underwood smash, um, they never use the word cheat until the hook. That's you right. Keep your powder dry. So that's that's a technique to do that too. Like, oh, don't use that word yet because that let take some of the steam out of it. Because I'll see that sometimes in songs where they use the. Sometimes you you hammer that word over and over and over again. That becomes the thing, right? Yeah. Other times you want to save it. That way it yeah. lands with maximum impact. Like if she'd been saying like, you're cheating on me and you cheated with her and you're a cheater and she's a cheater. Next time you'll think before you cheat, you'd be like, eh. Yeah. But you just paint the picture of this. Oh, so we know what's going on. We know there's cheating going on, but you haven't said it yet. And yeah. then you get like, maybe next time you'll think before you cheat, it's fresh and it has that power. So you want to make sure your hook lands with a punch. Or right a now. Like yeah. It's so good. <laughs> uh, fitting presentation is really important. So, a pre- you know, you don't want me to have to work too hard to hear what you're saying. Cause mm-hmm. then there's, then I'm having to spend energy just catching the words, not experiencing the words, that kind of stuff. And just having a good <laughs> professional presentation when you're presenting to professionals um, to use words to twice in the same sentence. The other thing is make sure that the lyric and the melody are well married. So <laughs> they need to fit together and support each other. And you want your song to be easily digestible. Follow. Remember the listener only knows what you've told them so far. They don't have a crystal ball. They haven't seen the end of it. So you got to make sure that they stay with you. Otherwise, you know, you may lose them. They may not hear that killer bridge or that killer hook because they checked out because you're like, okay, pass. Yeah. So that's just some of the stuff. Uh, We do these play for publisher events on a regular basis. I mean, we just did that. Now we're doing a, um, we're launching, about to launch a co-write pitch event, which gets you in front of an artist or a hit songwriter for a chance to, for co-write. We do pro connect events, which is another way. Oh, to really? That's of, fun. Yeah. Uh, to get it? in front of another pro. And so we do these on a regular basis. If you're interested and you want to get your stuff in front of a pro or to watch the replays and learn, you can do all that by starting your 14 day free trial of songwritingpro.com today. Um, and we do, I mean, that's not all we do, but again, the whole thing is about helping you write like a pro do business like a pro and connect to the pros because that's what we're all about there. So again, it's songwritingpro.com. That's what I got. Guys. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, that brings us to the end of another Killer Climb episode, y'all. Make sure that you join the Climb community, follow the podcast on the platform, and tell a friend about it. You know, that's like right. you're here for a reason. Help us help them. Help us help you help them, right? And you're cool, <laughs> we're cool, and they're better, and everybody wins, right? So www. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. Cool, right